don't even know what, how you should introduce I do. Me. Okay, well, here's the thing. <laughs> lately, lately, it's weird. It's like I'm, I, I, like, I know my government, right? And then I know my stage name. Right. And then recently, I feel like I've taken on a new moniker. SBS conscious? No, well, no. It's <laughs> like I walk in, and lately everybody's been calling me. They're, they're like, they've been calling me this. It's, they go, Jesus Christ, it's him. Oh, it's him. It's him. Like, no, like a Jesus, messiah? No, like like messiah? Je- no, like Jesus Christ, it's him. So it's like, it's weird. Like, I don't know if Oh, I, so like people, you think people know you. I, I don't know what they know. It's the weirdest <laughs> thing. I walked into the guest 7-Eleven today. They were like, Jesus Christ, it's him. I was like, that's So weird. is that your new moniker? Yeah, that's, I have no idea. And then it was weird. I was going to stop at the gas station. I had to go to run to the ATM. And the guy said the same thing. He go, Jesus Christ, it's him. I was like, now this is this Is, is that maybe a new mix it? Wow, well, that's a fucking term. <laughs> Back to 2004, huh, pal? <laughs> is it going on dot piff? Yeah, hiphopkings.com. <laughs> you know? All them, all them shits. Jesus oh, Christ, it's him. It just sucks when the song freezes. I mean, grow up and pay for a DSP, you cheap prick. All right? That. First off, this guy's using industry terms. Yeah. Yeah. yeah DSP. DSP. <laughs> yeah. Imagine knowing nothing. Yeah, that is imagine knowing nothing. Yeah. Imagine, that's, imagine that's knowing nothing. Defines, you know? You got it all set up. You got your yeah, fucking... You guys look fucking good. All right. Sorry. Well, I mean, we you know. Tell me. You don't, don't got to tell us that. You know. Gotta, yeah. Oh, okay. Cool. Sounds good. <laughs> Would you try to fade that thing? What? The beard? You tried to fade it? You cut your own hair? Yeah, I don't care. Yeah, you didn't have to tell me. I don't care. I, 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 I knew. I looked. I was like, there's a man that cuts his own beard. So yeah, when because, I first met Tony, because it takes him 20 minutes well, to get a fucking when first, when Beijing first, when he goes When again. I first met Tone many moons ago, he used to cut his own hair, too. No, I don't. You, you did. No, don't, don't say that. You used to take the salad bowl. Don't say I ever did that. There, I never did it. would be there with the scissors. No, I never did yeah, it. I never like, did it once. Not once. I remember one time we were getting ready to go out. I was like, Tony, you're coming. He's talking you about like, when we used to skip like, rocks down by the goes, fucking bay. Goes, I don't know he, what he's talking about. He goes, hold on. I got to get the bangs. And he starts going like this with the scissors. Kitchen shears, rather. They were shears. They were shears. Yeah, they were kitchen shears. Yeah. I just watched them. They were in the fucking thing where you dry it. Yeah. yeah. Fucking slob went from cutting the fucking chicken to his fucking bangs. No. Disgusting. Never did it. Never again. Never once. It was out there you were smoking meats. I, I was that. I was I was smoking. Uh, you were smoking crack. Apparently, cutting your hair like that, <laughs> fucking crazy. You know what sound that means? <laughs> it's uh, imagine no nothing. How you doing? How you doing? Um, I like the Christmas glasses. I I started you and Angelo off with the new Christmas glass. Those are fire, bro. Thank you, bro. Appreciate that. Uh. Obviously, it's yours to take home. Oh, my God. It's a little good beer for you to drink, being that you're not accustomed to such things. Uh, it's funny because one of our mutual friends, I hadn't seen him in a while either, and I haven't seen you since fucking 1962. So uh, I, I went to his crib the other day, and uh, I forgot to bring him a glass, and I was pissed off, but he did drink H, HP. Oh. So I went to our boy HP crib, and uh, I forgot to bring a glass. I felt bad, but I did bring the beers, and he was just like, so, hey, salute. Salute, bro. You get the bo- you get both of them, and we're gonna have to get uh, my boy H. Uh, this glass is really fire. I mean, you, you always outdo yourself, bro. Seriously, I try to step up my game every time. I don't want to get worse. Nah, you know what I mean? Because even even when you leak like the new release, yeah, obviously it looks like one thing on the internet. Of know? course, but bro, knowing you for a long time and and all all seriousness. Like you've really hit the ground running with this, bro, and I'm proud of you, bro. Yeah, I appreciate that. I mean, these these and the quality of the glass is good too. Like you could tell, like it's not cheap shit. I only pick certain styles that I know are gonna official compliment. Yeah, man, that's dope. Yeah, but bro, I mean, I haven't seen you literally since. I'm trying to remember the last time I saw you, bro. I don't even remember. That's how long it's been. You didn't come to the outing in Huntington. You had other plans. That was right before COVID. I think hit. It was definitely, and I didn't see you before that, so it's definitely been bef- well before COVID at this point. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And I mean, I was in. The, I went to this guy's wedding. Like we fucking known each other. I mean, how long have I even known you? That's something I'm trying to think of right now too. Like when when do we actually meet? 2008. Yeah, it was something like, when, like that. It was like it was like when H came home. Yeah, which was when I don't even remember to be honest. Probably H? 2008, something like that. Yeah, like 2008, Seven. 2009, maybe. 
Yeah, and how do we even meet? I don't even remember how we meet. I remember seeing videos, Millie, Millie but how? I pulled up. I was with Millie somewhere, and we pulled up, and I don't know if we went to a bar. I don't know if it was... I don't know if it was the bench or what was that spot by nah it couldn't have been by the old uh Crudmart. What was that old what was that spot at the original Crudmart? It had that bar down on the on that corner. The the bench? No, 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 no. Remember when, when Crud was like uh The Country Corner? It might have been there. I don't been remember there. the first I, it's crazy because it's been so long now. I don't remember the first time I met you, but I do remember the first time I seen you. Millie had reposted some video or something. Moment. No, Millie fucking sent some video to me of like people ciphering in a parking lot or some shit. Mm. And you was in the cipher. Okay. And I was I remember everybody was trash and you was like pretty good. And I was like, I've, this this he sounded like he's pretty good. And Millie was like, Oh yeah, that's calm, blah blah blah. Like I know the dude, blah blah blah. How'd you meet Millie? Funny shit is, I remember way back in the day. I met, I, I met, met, see, a lot of the people that I've, that have become either friends or, or more than just acquaintances. Yeah. It's always started with music. It does. So a lot of our guys, like, that it, we chill with in our circle, basis. it's all, like, we met through music somehow. So, at the time, I think Millie was doing a lot of shit with Kaz at the moment. Back when 2Fs was really jumping. Right. And... I just remember being on Facebook and it was Joe Millie, Joe Millie, Joe Millie, Joe Millie, Joe Millie, Joe Millie, Joe Millie. Like all these artists. He was getting beat placements with everyone local. Bro. At local at the time. I think that was around the time when when the when the Island Def Jam thing had really popped for him. And I was like, yo, fuck it. Like you know, I, I like the beats. And I remember I reached out to him. I think I had to make me a custom because at the time I was going to work with a uh, Block McLeod. Okay. And, I remember, dude, yeah. And I met up with him to pay him. And bro, like we had a like, it wasn't just like here. Here's the money. Here's all right. Cool. I send it, and we left. It was like I met him. I think at like a fucking Applebee's or something stupid. And we sat down. And we so had yeah, a I was beer. shopping it out. Yeah. yeah. And then one beer turned into two beers, and two beers turned into three beers. And next thing you know, we were sitting there. And I was like, "Yo, oh, take my math." And then it just went off from there, bro. Now it's my brother. And it's kind of I think it's like a similar thing with you. Like, I fe- like again, we one thing, another thing with our circle, aside from the fact that. Music is the foundation. It's like, bro, you know, like we're all assholes. Yeah, it's true. So yeah, we're like, all cut from the same cloth in that way that we'll fuck with each other. We clown each other for fun. Bad. No bad. And, and, and like you, nobody really makes fun of us skin. worse than us. No, no one. No, no. I mean, all. nobody makes fun of anyone worse than us. Sometimes I don't think, bro. If half the shit we said to each other was recorded. <laughs> bro, cancel culture. Uh, yeah, if we're cut out for. Them. I mean, yeah, because uh, the group check is out of, literally out of control. Group chat, Xbox parties, phone calls. Well, that's the thing, too, is I think we all got, we met through music, but we all got closer through gaming, which is even funnier. Another because pillar. Yeah, because all of us was, at that point, acquainted with each other through music, but then we'd be like, oh, new Call of Duty's out, like, dropping our names on Facebook or Twitter or whatever the fuck, yeah. and we'd all add each other, and the next thing you know, we're starting parties, he's inviting him, he's inviting him. Next thing you know, we got, like, a group of fucking 10 guys on there, and we was all hanging out. And playing video games together for fucking years. Yeah, bro. For Back years. In the 360 days. And the crazy shit is technology has come such a long way that like... And this is the one thing, like, I think my wife has come to understand it. But it's like, those Xbox parties really are like... I haven't seen you in years, but... I'll see you and I feel like I just Oh, we just pick you. up where we left off. Yeah. But same thing with H. The other day, we both felt the same way. It was like... Because those Xbox parties are the new form of hanging out. It is. It's like it was before hectic, before there was hectic. Discord or Zoom or video calling or none of that shit. There was fucking Xbox Live parties. Exactly. You know what I mean? And now somehow that I got this fucking we got this new schlub that's been hanging on Angie. And oh I yeah, Ange. Yeah, Big Ange. Yeah, M- Mangy. Hey, you know. <laughs> and wow, I don't know how long crazy. that's gonna last. But he's like he, he you know he's he he's doing all right. So far. No, yeah, he's a PC guy. Other than, yeah. PC Pat. The Other than real. the 20 minutes I was waiting on front today. We're all Xbox guys. Nice. We all be on the Xbox. We still game to this day. It's literally the same crew of guys that we've been playing with for fucking whatever. It's been 15 years. Yeah, bro. It's pretty crazy. Yeah. But music-wise is something that we all, I mean, and me and Millie were way more involved back then than we are now. Even you were more involved than you were probably now but you're still more involved than the rest of us yeah. you're the one who lasted through all the storms everything why do you think that is 
you know it's weird bro it's like it's it's not even so much that I, I don't think I'm not as vested. It's like the thing is, is it's I got to go out and live and experience shit in order to keep creating. You know what I'm saying? Like I can sit and write every day, every day, every day, every day. But after a while, it's like, all right, like you're writing go, the same shit. You need yeah, something. You need I, I inspiration go, to write exactly, about. Exactly, bro. And honestly, it's just it's an itch. And I think for me personally, I've come to grips where it's like. God willing, something happens with it, beautiful. But at the end of the day, it's therapeutic for me. Like, you know what I'm saying? I think it was for everybody that I worked with that, like, on a level other than, like, he, you give me money, I give you a beat. Yeah. Anyone who I work with on any other level, which obviously you've been to my house and made beats with yeah. me for yourself, so you on, you're on a different level. But anybody who I put on that platform with us, I would say feels that way that it was some kind of therapy therapeutic value to make creating uh music in general 1000 yeah. percent. but also if you really think about it too another like look at our circle right and then look at out of our circle look at everybody that really did music like that another thing that we all had in common is we all kind of got to that gate in one way or another, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Like, yeah. like you started getting placements. Millie was already making placements. Me and Millie, H. me and Millie were, I, we're from the same town, so we knew that the reason us connected so many people together and through each other was because we were already connected before that right. through our town, right? And then it was like I was rapping, he was making beats, but then I told him like straight up, like I've always wanted to make beats, like put me on to making beats, and he helped me start the groundwork of how i taught myself to make beats and you he gave me with a whole different sound well the and thing, that's what and that's yeah. what that's what really caught fire it was you starting off with a whole different sound and then h trying really to match that one, really being the one in my opinion h really was the one that kind of was like yo sun fire like you get what i'm saying like, yeah and and after that like it just took off with like uh sunlight yeah. Like when Sunlight came out, that's when it was like, yo, this beat is fucking fire. And it was different. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? But even if that's you what I was at, going for, you know that. You you were you were getting I was trying to call my own lane something that not everybody was making beats their own style. They had like everybody has a style. You have to do something where you hear something and you're like, oh, it's that producer. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? I was trying to just carve that lane so that you have that brand that it's like you hear the joint, you're like, oh, this is probably a this guy joint. And it's not easy to do that. Nah. But then look at it, but even going, so so you have Millie who had a deal on the table, right? You were really starting to catch a lot of traction where, like, even talking behind the scenes, like, I remember you saying, like, yo, bro, like, I got placements, but they're fucking playing with. They don't do nothing with them. Right. Exactly. And then H had a deal on the table. Oh, yeah. Right? And then I had a writing deal. Yep. If you look at the common denominator, I think all of us. Through those experiences, saw the bullshit that comes yeah, with what we're Yeah, it was so much. It was, yeah. And I think with when we really saw the bullshit happening, I think... And even uninspiring. Me, it, happened, it happened to me, bro. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And I think it, it happens to everybody at some point. Yeah. Like, the, like you feel like, the like industry, this is what I'm fighting yeah, for? Yeah, the industry is like, wait, I'm, uh, it, when you realize what's all the behind the closed doors there... It's like, wait, I'm doing all this trying to get into this. I want yeah. to put myself in this fucking situation. Yeah. This is not. <laughs> this is not it. But I, and, and and H I, realized that before everybody. That's why he would never take no deal. He would never. Yeah. He would. He knew. Oh no, this is. I'm not. Yeah, unless the deal's perfect, I'm not signing it. Which I always gave him mad respect for because it was yeah. hard to sometimes leave those situations around just because principle. And I always respected that. Well, I'm. I'm like. I'll say like. I'm not going to mention the name because I know the people and I know the type of people they are. So to protect myself, I'm not going to say the name, but like we can dive into it. So like, you know who I had the writing deal with. Right? Yeah. Okay. Bro, when I tell you like, because I don't even think we really spoke about it. We might have kind of briefly went over it, but like in depth, I don't think we no, really we never went super it. deep. You gave me uh, so touch of service. The So the way it goes is like this, right? It's like. Yeah, like, we all got a, a, a checkered past, right? When my son was born, I really cleaned my act up and really... Became a family, man. Yeah, bro. I seen it myself. I was... I, I, I Then I seen it, and I was like, man, I'm proud of this guy because he's taking his life to the next level over here. Well, you know? it was because the shit I was doing at the time, like, bro, like, my, like, like my wife blacked on me. She was like, yo, look at what you're doing. Like, I don't need... Jaden was under, like, un, like, not even one yet. She was like, I don't need him talking to you behind the glass. Yeah. 
And I was like, all right. So went and got a job, flew to straight and narrow, do, doing what I had to do. I mean, I had a job even when I was doing the dumb shit, yeah. but I could give a fuck. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I say all that to say the music takes, do it does what it does, and now I got the writing deal. Right. And the funny thing about that is, which is, let's be honest, what you were going for. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, that is a even, part of what you wanted to go for. And even me and Sin, before that even came about, me and Sin, um, one of our dreams was open up our own writing firm. Like even before that was even on the table and how that deal even came about. So I wrote complications. Yeah. Now I got the telling you, Henny, for that situation. Yeah. I love that. Joint. It's I, one of my favorite joints from you. I, banger. I, thank you, bro. I actually met, set up a meeting with Kaz to discuss a rollout for it. Like, I, cause I felt like that's like, they You're say like, like, this is the one. Yeah. They say like every artist that's on the album already has a hit record. They just don't know what to do with it. Correct. That was the first record. I was like, whoa, like that, like this could do something. Yeah. So I met with him out that's in the city. That's how I felt about it the first time I heard it too. And, and first and foremost, I'm going to say this right now, Kaz, I think for a long time back in the two F days, I, I, I didn't understand him too much. But Kaz is one of the most stand-up, smart, like, I got nothing but love and respect and positive things to say about him. Like, the Kaz really has been a great uh, uh, role, like, kind of like a role model. And I see him be like a liaison to, to the people under him. Yeah, bro. Like, he's not, he he's just trying to do what's best for everybody. Yeah, it seems that way. So, him and, so I met up with him to discuss the rollout plan for this. So, he hears it, and he's like, oh, this is cool. He's like, yo, what else you got? And at the time, I had some, like, hooks I was working on, but, like, there was no verses to them. So I was like, oh, fuck. So I was like, I wasn't expecting that. So I just showed him this one hook I had wrote at the time. Um, at the time, it was called Grateful. And he was like, you wrote this? I was like, yeah. He was like, yo, I, I think you would be go a good fit here. I was like, oh, uh, okay. I, I didn't even know what the fuck they did. Like, you get what I'm saying? Yeah. He was just like, it would be a good fit. I only knew through our other mutual <laughs> friend. Yeah. Yeah. So... He shows that to the head of this organization. Mm -hmm. And he's like, yeah, 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 bring him on. Now, let me tell you the fucking type of fucking shit that I would deal with, okay? I get up early. I go to work. I'm a working man now. I get there. I, I work by 5.30, 6 o'clock in the morning. Yo, yo, what's good? We got a brief. And the deadline is tomorrow. We need you to come out yeah, here to, to lower Manhattan and get this shit done. So now I'm leaving work, going around Konkuma. Taking going the train the from Ronkonkoma, going straight to the city. They're showing me the beat when I get there. They're telling me the brief. Which, you got to write the whole thing in a fucking hour. Yeah, for those that don't know what a brief is, a brief is basically like, we're looking for this kind of record. We're looking It'll for... It'll be like a, a Justin Bieber type record with the vibe right. of this and that for the... Right. Use, they, key, use, use key words that will describe yeah. empowerment. Yeah, bah, they, bah, 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 bah. they basically give you the groundwork of what the song they want and they're like all right they now you, you make concept. it yeah they give you the whole concept yeah okay cool do that and mind you i don't don't get paid unless you actually land it right correct so i'm like you know what it's part of the 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 grind i gotta do i gotta pay my dues now i automatically expected going into this like i'm gonna have to pay tax on something yeah yeah right so meaning like they Tone's, brought you in. Right. Tone's my man. Yeah. He brought me in. He's in position. So now I'm already going in with the mindset from the, the dumb shit I was doing back. Like, oh, I got I to gotta break you gotta him, break off, him off. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. I'm cool with that. Yeah. Right? That's, so you put that's me in a game. Position. That's a game. Yeah. Okay. So now I bring, sing, uh, I bring Sin on with me. Because, again, this was, we talked about this before this even came about. Yeah. I'm starting to get phone calls like, yo... Um, the man, we didn't really sign him. We signed you. So they they sit me down in the lawyer's office. And I told the lawyer, I said, yo, look. I said, this is my brother. I said, we talked about doing something like this before y'all even asked me to be a part of this. I didn't ask y'all to be a part of this. Y'all asked me. Right. So, so you're like, if we I'm coming, he's coming. Right. And I, I literally verbatim said to him, I said, yo, we could do this one of two ways. You can give me my contract and give him a contract. Or you can give me a contract and me and him will figure out the finances on our own back end. Right. But either way, we come together. It's a yeah, package like, deal. Like that's what it yeah. is. Lawyer looked at me, looked at Sin, looked at the head honcho in charge at the time. Head honcho went like that. He pulled out two contracts. I got, I played a part in helping Sin get a deal with them also. Okay. Cool. 
fast forward, get a phone call. They're like, yo, um, the XFL is, is kicking off again. Okay, dope. Yo, we need you to write a record for every team. This is on a Friday. I'm so like, I remember when this happened because I believe our other mutual friend was also getting uh, called in for this stuff. And I think it got to a point where like... They were they were just gotten every opportunity that they got on the table. They were just taking you guys and like slap sticking you guys in there, like get it done like right away. Like yeah. and like with it, he was always telling me like it was like some last minute shit. He just had to dip to the city and go do some shit, bro. We wrote. So here's the thing: he it's goes, under like the gun. Like they yeah, ain't bro, even getting you creative. No, and and he, and the fucked up shit is they 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 have these briefs sitting for a while. That's what I'm saying is, is that they see the deadlines and now suddenly it's like and I and I I don't like when anyone acts like that in any way. Yeah, bro. We're like, bro, that's not that. Is that gonna? Is that the best way of going about it? No, let's right. be honest. And the thing is, is like you're not gonna tell me like Universal. Like wait till the last minute with that shit. You know what it is. A dude. Fortune 500 company is not doing that, bro. You know it's, what it is? It, depend, it. it depends, though, bro, because you know how it works with these fucking A and R's and these fucking jerk offs all over the place. Yeah. Half of them are like Juilliard students who just daddy knows somebody. Yeah. They're not really business people, business savvy, street savvy, uh, culture savvy. Even the the fucking genre music they're in savvy. They're just fucking robots filling a position, and a lot of times it gets very uncoordinated because of shit like that. Yeah, but like being there. And then talking, like, so I became cool with another individual I'm not going to name just to protect him as well. And he became, like, another person. I was like, because, I mean, bro, this dude, you want to talk about fucking talent? Like, it, that record Grateful I told you earlier yeah. about. Someone was like, yo, um, who made this beat? And I was like, oh, I leased it from a producer. And he was like, nah. He was like, this is a big one. He's like, all right, give me, he's like, give me, like, an hour. I don't know what the fuck that means. Dude's very talented. He he, he just whips something live, up. Out of nowhere. Live instrumentation. He does this shit all the time. And it was insane. No, he's got crazy talent, that kid. And he goes, What I wanna like we wanna take this from you. I was like, Well, that was gonna be for a personal joint, so we're gonna have to renegotiate. Like that wasn't part of the deal. Yeah. We're like, gonna have to talk shit. about this. Yeah. And he understood that. <clears throat> Can I tell you something? I, I gotta tell you something. The guy you're talking <clears throat> about. When I was making beats, I had very little. His respect. name begins with an H. No, you're not thinking. We're oh, not talking about the same person. You're thinking, I know who you. you know I know he's he's cool too. I think he he's very talented. I know who you're talking about. He's very talented. I just think he just he also has a very like he's the golden child over there. Correct. So now all the other talent that comes in, they're like second all fiddle. Their, yeah, but all their work, like another producer I know that was working over there. All his shit was fire. And he literally told me one day, like, I, I did an experiment. I told the head honcho that the golden child made this. And he was like, oh, this is fire. Because everything I was doing before that, he's he like, oh, no. show it to him. Because yeah. I don't think that's ready. And then I, I made something very similar to the last one I showed him. And I told him the golden child made it. And he I don't was know who you're, the one you're talking about. But the one that I was talking about is one of the few guys, though, I did have respect for. Respect for as a music <laughs> producer out here. Because not only, not only did he have respect in general, but he also backed it up. Like he, yeah. dude, could produce music. Bro, I watched him cook like a record for Shakira in ten minutes. That's and the thing it was, is these guys. And it was radio ready. Yeah, that's crazy. Like ten minutes. No, yeah, like I've seen these, these lyrics. that. It's fucking insane. Yeah, it is crazy. So we get a phone call. It's a Friday night. Like, yo, XFL is coming back around. Okay, cool. We need it by Monday. Oh, like written, recorded, done, done for every Submitable. team. For every team, <laughs> so you need twenty six records in a weekend, yeah, bro. I I take off from work on that Monday. We knock every fucking one out. Wow, go out there, record them. It was an all day thing. I think I took like a seven something train out there. I didn't get home till like eleven o'clock that night, and it was just draining. Now it's and then, work and not fun, by the way. Yeah, and <laughs> and but well, the thing is, like, it's fun, but it, it that's not what didn't make it fun. It became annoying. Like, it's always this last minute shit. But mm. okay, I get it. Like, there's not it's not always glitz. Like everything that glitters ain't gold. Nope. So okay, that's fun. What started to become funny to me is like, <clears throat> by the way, you're a Phillies fan now. 
The hat goes yeah, with everything. Yeah. The hat goes. You love the hat. You love the hat. It's all you right. Fuck whole Phillies fan. <clears throat> Holy shit. <clears throat> Yo, nah. can, you, can you grab us another beer? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, <clears throat> but pour yourself some, my boy. Look, you know what I mean? What the fuck? Appreciate Come on, bro. Have, have a little fucking beer with us over here. Guys having water in a fucking guy, yeah. Guy, glass. Guys having a pre workout. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nah, pour yourself some, bro. So. I already had gotten a couple of placements with Universal, a couple of placements with XFL, but here's where I got pissed off and I really started paying attention. Me and Sin sat down in my living room. Sin basically lived at my house that weekend and we did all the records. So they, they place. Um, my BMI picks it up. Now, once it goes to BMI, you could check the status. Correct, you see where everything was going on. Right. So it was already in the BMI. All right. I look at the... Thank you. I look at the writing credits. They didn't put you on there. No, they did. But now, there's eight of the names on there aside from me and Sin. <sighs> Mind you, none of those names is Kaz, who I should be paying tax to. And they're all... He's the only one who should be on there, probably. Yeah, and I figured the head honcho. And him, yeah. So I'm like, yo, what the fuck? So now I'm sitting here and I'm like, nah. I called Sin and I'm like, you know what's crazy? I did not realize we had a house party that night that we wrote, that weekend that we wrote all those records. And he's like, what are you talking about? So I showed him. Now I'm noticing like, it's just a lot of little dumb shit. And then the guy. It's always, can I just tell you something? Uh, wherever this is going, all of these fucking stories in the music industry always fucking end in one way with too many fucking hands in the pot, bro. And, but that's the thing. So. I come to find out through the gentleman I spoke about earlier that I said I, I started to look up to that he cooked up a beat in an hour of all live instrumentation. He pulled me up on the rooftop of the building and um, he goes, you should do your research on this certain individual's name. So I said, okay. So long story short, he had another organization like this. And basically what he would do is so you make a beat. He would be like, yo, Tone, you know what you should add to that? You should add like a kick right, right he here. Put a, put a fucking snare, an extra snare. And now all of a sudden he's getting 60%. And now he's getting fucking more than you. Yeah. Because so he's taking last, 60% writing credit. By the way, that's how they do it. The problem they always is, have. Oh, I don't know how they do that. It's that's crazy. crazy. But here's the thing. Bro. That here's is how the they thing. do it. That I've been crazy. in sessions in the fucking city, bro. And it was like, you could just tell. These guys were just... They're plotting on each other. They're plotting on each other. Yes, they're all snake... It's a snake pit, bro. It's a snake pit. It's crazy. But Peep Game, the organization he had before that, all the employees got together and put in a class action lawsuit on him. Mm. And he had to pay them like an absurd amount of money. So I'm talking to Son and he goes, he had to shut down that organization start up a new one and everybody that he mm. borrowed money from to pay these people off those are the names you're seeing on your writing credit He's paying everyone back so mm. now i can tell you like your angel like Ange, like you you held me down with 400k yeah i could give you that money or for the rest of your life and even when you die your kids and their grandkids they'll have royalty checks every quarter coming in so now, yeah, you could take the cash, but you'd be dumb because in the long run, you're just basically getting a payment plan yeah, you get, yeah, yeah, you're yeah. Getting for the rest of your life. Residual income. Yeah. 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 A, lot, a lot of big people in music make all their fucking money off of just residuals. Like, Millie, I remember back in the day, one of his mentors was a big producer. Dude got a bunch of placements for big movies, Fast and Furious, other shit. Checked out. Was like, all right, that's enough for me. Because yeah. now no matter what, these movies are big enough that you're getting fucking nice residual yeah. checks no matter what. Yeah. yeah. So that's wild. So, so I see what he's saying. So now fast forward, I end up, I stopped dealing with them like that. Bro, they had me in the middle of COVID, it, 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 dead ass heat of the summer, come, come up there, do a brief. Bro, it's like the guy fucking took everything out of there. We had to record on a bullshit ass mic. It was just like, man, I'm professional. And it's like, yo, bro, there's COVID. You got me coming to the fucking city. Like, all right, again, everything that glitters ain't gold. Yeah. So I'm 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 gonna do what I gotta do because I'm this is part of the fucking work I gotta put in. Long story short, I'm not gonna speak for Kaz, but Kaz left that organization. Yeah, wit wit our other boy. I can do right. it right now. 
And um, shout out my boy Matty Patty. And <laughs> yeah, and I ended up stepping away as well. Me and Kaz speak. Kaz was like, bro, like I, I caught a whiff of what was going on. I didn't realize to the severity of what was going on. Yeah. Right. Fast forward now. I basically told them they can kiss my ass. Their lawyer reaches out to me. He goes, yo, this record you did at the time, we we, we had called it Overtime. And the head honcho didn't believe in it. Kaz heard it. Uh, one of the main people that were responsible for putting her, you know her, mm -hmm. her on, no pun intended, um, was there. He heard it. And he was like, nah, like... This is like this is Super Bowl, like every sporting event that could play this. Like it's fucking insane. Head honcho didn't believe in it. Lawyer reaches out to me. Now they want to use it. NHL wants to use it for their playoffs. Mm -hmm. mm. He goes, "Can can you sign it?" I said, "Yo, I, I call Kaz. I have a conversation with Kaz. I write back to the lawyer. I go, well, right now, um, Kaz manages all my EMI shit. Don't reach out to me no more. Reach out to Kaz." But I did that as a fuck you because they kind of like the, the way they they ended off was bad. So like he, they ain't gonna talk to him. Yeah, and I told the lawyer I said, first off, yeah, anything I wrote y'all had, but I never signed a vocal contract on that, so you can't use my vocals without me signing that contract. I was like, so we got some math to sit down and figure out. But you can talk to Kaz. It got quiet after that. I never mm. heard that on the playoffs. They'd rather not deal They'd with it. They'd rather not deal with it. Yeah. That's crazy. Uh, I mean, our other boy has gotten some big fucking placements. Yeah. He, he got some... Uh, he, I mean, he's talented too. Bro. Oh yeah, no, I know, but he got some big placements right now. Like fucking, like almost every week they like play like a snippet of his shit on the NFL. It's pretty crazy. Yeah. yeah. I mean, me, I, I've spoken to Kaz every time we talk. We're like, yo, we gotta go grab dinner because I, Kaz is starting. He has that uh, big wins only. Yeah, I saw him and Maddie was doing that. They're they're doing so it. So they're and starting I, their own. Well, they're starting pretty much what they were doing, where they're gonna take. Uh, you know, a &Rs will feed them fucking things but that they're, they're looking do for. It, but, but see, like, they got Ten Rock, and Ten Rock is super talented. They want to do, like, writing for mainstream artists. Okay, that's I've, different. I've expressed to Kaz. I mean, big labels, like, fucking call it Jive Records will do this, where they fucking have a &Rs who literally sculpt this fucking project for the artist. Yeah. And the artist has nothing to do with it. They just are the artist, and these guys, like, literally put these feelers out to companies like what these guys are going to be doing yeah. that is like we're looking for this type of record and these people try to create that record for them and they literally record it and then the new artist will just literally record the vocals well, like you know, lip sync it well okay. you know that well you know that um that Justin Bieber record, I got my peaches down in Georgia. Yeah, 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 shit. yeah, yeah. John Bell wrote like yeah, half John that Bell. album. John Bell wow. has a lot of uh, Who's placements the in Who's Long that? Island? Well, he is. He He's is, the yeah. GOAT. That's I mean, even back then when we was doing shit, he was always on a different level. The yeah, guy's like a bro, fucking genius. Yeah, he's a musical genius. No, but he is. I've told Kaz that I want to run his, like, we got to sit down and talk because I want to help develop a sync um, because that's all those types of records. So, like, when you write records for movies, for shows, for anything like that, sporting events, okay. it's called sync. Okay. And I told him I want to sit down with him and, and talk about developing a sync. For uh, what, though? For big wins only. Mm. And then running it. And he was like, yeah, like, let's sit down and talk. Like, now you're talking my language. It's just, you know, bro, that guy's a thousand miles in running. And for the most part, I'm pretty busy, but if it's just a matter of whenever he can sit down. I mean, every other day I, I see him, he's like in California, he's in Texas, he's in, the guy moving all over the fucking place. So, but I That's say that crazy. to say, going back to all the way back full circle, after I dealt with that, I'm not going to lie, bro, like I, I did feel defeated. Yeah. And it, it got to a point where... I had to tell myself, like, I didn't have no inspiration to write to do shit. Yeah, that, I, that's why I quit, bro. You know that. I told you. People always like, wait, you don't make no beats anymore? I'm like, bro, I haven't made a beat since 2014. But, you know, but I look, and but I get that. But the thing is, is I looked at it as 15, a, I looked probably. at it as a test, right? Like, I got this far on my own, bro. I didn't have no major cosign. I didn't yeah. buy, like, the only thing I did was try to set up a meeting with Kaz for to discuss a rollout plan for what I felt was my biggest record. That's it. No major cosign, no crazy pop already happening. And I got that far on my own. I'm not gonna fall to just the first speed the first speed bump. So I'm gonna keep going. And if something happens, well then I'm blessed. And if not, 
then okay, but guess what? I still have a core fan base and a cult following that look for when I'm putting shit out. Bro, I can show you my DMs right now. When the fuck is the new music coming? I went on, that's why, I don't know if you saw the other day on, uh, last week on Instagram or two weeks ago, I went on a spree of just putting snippets on my story. Well, I mean, the thing is, bro, this is, this is one of the biggest things for any person who's in music to do is to stay that consistent. It's hard. Yeah. Especially with a real life, a real job, a family, all that yeah. shit. There's not enough time in the day for regular ass shit, let alone putting together a fucking good ass project. Yeah. yeah. And like, that's where the fucking loss is as far as like, these people have to realize like this shit, it ain't easy. No, it's not. No, nah, and plus you really got to be motivated and have that inspiration to get shit done quickly and efficiently. And it's very easy to lose that throughout all the shit that you've been through, not to mention COVID and everything else and yeah. what just life, bro. This shit beats you down, bro. All this shit beats you down. Yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? But the industry itself, when you start to see the inner workings and obviously now that you have, you understand this shit, it ain't. It almost feels like, and this is why I stopped doing it. It's like, this ain't worth it. <laughs> but you, but no, you're right, though. But you know what, though? Another thing that I looked at is uh, I would never, ever, ever in a million years sign to a major. No, not at this I point. Would never. Well, here's the thing. Back when we was doing shit, really doing shit, yeah. you had to. Yeah. Now, it's not like it that ain't no like more, that anymore. No now not. you could carve your own path if you got the bread and the and the people around you and the talent. And be independent, and there is no middle. You, yo, I mean, yeah, look at these guys like Benny. And Conway and 38 Special yeah. and West Side Gun and all those guys from Call It Up State. Those guys did everything by themselves, bro. And they huge right now. Well, they these took, guys are they ended up They ended up taking a deal with Shady. But now they're and not then they even went to, No, but I think I could be wrong, but I, I think Conway Wes, Wes and, and Con went to Rock Nation. Now, Benny, I don't know. I don't know his situation. But even either. if you look at Russ, like I, I know that's not really uh, my favorite of all those guys is Thirty Eight Special. You know that, yeah. and he's the most least known. He don't definitely don't have the deal. He started his own label. He signed motherfuckers to him. He signed guys who was around longer than him to him. Like right, like he signed Ransom, I wanna, and I was like, I got respect for that. That's you cool. brought up Thirty Eight Special. All right, now I want to talk to you about that because I, I put it in the group chat the other day, and I I don't know if you saw. You didn't comment on it. Your boy I probably was, didn't see your, it. Your boy was wilding, bro. What Thirty Eight Special? What are you doing now? All right, so I'm scrolling through the gram. I don't know what the fuck happened, but you post a video of somebody's recording it. This dude is coming down the block, and you go, there he is. There's the rat. There's the rat. Come here, rat. Yokes him up and starts slapping the shit out of him in the 38 face. 38 was doing Yo, it? Yo, bro, what? Had him, like, in a headlock, so, like, dude is standing right here, like, almost like I got him, like, like, like this, and he's just smacking the shit out of him. And he's like, you fucking rat. You rat. Don't, yo, the dude looked like he was ready to cry. I'm not even playing. Like, Jeez. he looked like he was ready to cry. Wait, this is 30, did this in live public, on public, on Broad fucking daylight. Instagram? Broad daylight. And oh. recorded it and posted it? On the internet? Now you, now you see why I'm oh, like, yo, your man is wild. wild. Yeah, bro. I love, listen. Mind I, you, this you, is before you know the Harry Fraud album You have dropped. to understand, you and me love shit like this. I Like, this is hilarious to me. I think it's great that he did that. And as a fan of him, I love that. But at the same time, it's like. You're an idiot. It's like, it's like, it's like, ooh, don't post that, yeah. bro. Mm. Fuck posting it. You're you're you're, assaulting you're, you're successful. A don't do that right now. Rat. Yeah, don't do that right now. And secondly, <laughs> dude didn't look like a gang like bro, he looked like a regular civilian. Yeah. So technically, if he's a civilian and he's not tied to anything, he can't be a rat. If you're a civilian, if you go like no yeah, I'm yeah, never yeah. looking at Angelo and being like he's a rat. No, he looks like a civilian, bro. How the fuck is he a rat? He honest man works on a five, never got his hands dirty. I don't. I, I'm just saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How do he can't be a rat? He's a civilian. I see what you're saying. So now you just look like a bully, and then on top of that, you're putting your hands on video. Yeah, that's to what a it is for me. Rat. I gotta say, and you're about to drop an album with insane features yeah. produced by Harry Fraud. What the fuck are you doing? Yeah. See, like, yeah, you're I right. I see what you're saying. We, we it's just not a smart business move. No, no. Bro, we you're right. We do love shit like yeah, that. Yeah, because it's like funny to me. But one thing that really scuffs my fucking Tims is I hate when you have artists that like, bro, I look at some of these artists that make stupid fucking life decisions. 
that are in these like prime positions. Yeah, that's, and it really irks the shit. It's like, out yo, of me, you bro. have an opportunity. You don't waste this on some or dumb you, shit. Yeah, bro, I would die to be in your yeah, shoes. Yeah, yeah, I see what you're saying. And you're being a fucking idiot. Yeah, I see what you're saying. So now when I see Thirty Eight Special, we we know about them. Oh yeah. But now you're putting out an album that's gonna expose you to more people. Why would you risk doing something stupid? No, I hear, you're I hear what you're saying. Get on that locked front. up, bro. Yeah, you're a fucking idiot. Yeah, I I gotta say though, lyrically though, he's the best I've heard in a long time, in a long time. And you know me, I'm like a fucking by the book lyricist guy. Like I like things to be You're perfectly one of the structured. Critics, I know. I'm the worst critic, and I'm the <laughs> and I know I am, and I'll I'll stand on that block because like I know it's true, yeah. and I know I'm a more closed minded minded uh, listener. Cause only of with it. rap though. Only with rap. Only with rap. Because that's what it's about. Yeah. I for, can I talk to you about something quick? I gotta ask you this question now that we get we get into this shit. Like when did you when, like when did you become a fan of rap? Like what made you a fan of hip hop? What was that moment that was like, oh, I like this shit? Like I'm into this shit. And then wh secondary question to that. Then from there, how did it turn into you wanted to do it? I mean, much like like you, I think it started for me like back. TV was different back when I was a MTV. kid. MTV, yeah, yeah, bro. You yeah. had MTV, Music BET, videos. yeah. Then you, you had know, MTV you're seeing too. Tupac, Biggie, the yeah, prime of, bro. of this pun, shit. Pun, all these yep. guys, music videos, Wu Tang, yeah, mm. bro. Wu Tang, Onyx, Onyx Rock was Kim. huge for me. Yeah. That was the first rap. I, it's funny you brought that up. Onyx Slam single cassette, my boy. Rich Cinderella, shout out my boy Rich Cinderella. I haven't seen that guy in probably twenty years since Cortland, uh, but he fucking had a headphones on and he's just like, "Yo, listen to this," and put the headphones on me and it was fucking slam. And I just never forget being like, "You're like, what the fuck? What was that? That shit was fucking amazing." And so, so people, so now, you know, you're, you're exposed to it, of course. But and what now, was the one for I'm you? In school, I'm in school and I became cool with my man Danny. My man Danny, my man Stefan, my man Sirico. Uh, and Danny was like way more invested into this shit than I even knew. It was like, bro, he put me onto like like Master Ace. Like MTV at BC was, was a player. You're, you're saying Ace. this was the first shit you were exposed to? Like, like really thoroughly, like digging through the crates, exposed to Rock Him. He put me on to Rock Him, bro. I'm like, how old are you? Because we got exposed to a younger back in the day. That's what, that's my question. If I had to guess, 11? And what about you, Angelo? Just, the Master just, Ace and, and Rakim what, 11. When, what's like the first rap joint you heard when, and when? I'm probably going to say uh, the Dre album. Which one? The the first one. Uh, the first one and the second Chronic. One. Yeah, both of those. Uh, yeah. Chronic was... All right, so for me, Chronic was exposed was one of the earlier ones I was exposed to too yeah. because my boy D Shep, he had an older brother, way older brother. Mm. He was like already in high school when we was in like fourth grade, mm. and he would like go out with his boys, and me and him would like raid his CD and tape stash and mm. just go go yep. in. Yep. Yeah. So yep. that's how we would we did it just by like sneaking around and fucking finding a CD or a tape, and we would dub it. Mm -hmm. We would buy the the, the cassette and just oh dub God. it while mm -hmm. he was gone. Yep. Yeah. And then he and then my boy D Shep. Shout out Disha, he would make me. He would have more time than me with the shit, so he would make mixtapes based off all this shit that we found on the and double my cassette and hand them off to me. So that's how we got put onto it. It is a magical moment when you really do discover hip hop. No, it yeah. is. like it really yeah. is because once you get like beneath what you're fed, yes. it's like because oh. it's like oh whoa yeah it's like you realize like there's a moment you have where it's like yeah. I was only at the tip of the ice. That's right. Yeah, you get what I'm saying. Yep. The artist that made me want to rap is Royce the Five Nine. Okay, I followed Royce since Boom. Ah, uh, not Boom. Pardon me. Let's grow. Let's grow. People don't realize was his first single before Boom. Yeah, I only knew Boom. Boom was the first time I heard him. Let's grow was his first single ever. I was big into Royce more after high school. Like I would say probably like uh, two thousand five or six to like. Seven is when I like really dived in, dove into Royce. But here's the thing: it wasn't um, Rock City that album, that first album that made me that that he had that made me want to rap. It okay. wasn't till Death Is Certain. Like I was already kind of rapping. Was, Death Is Certain is what made me be like, all right, let me take this serious. Yeah, and I and and I've said this before, and I credit this one record he has that was like, I got to take this more serious. It was I and Me. 
I do this music for me. I take time and put pride in it. This music is me. There's no ruin in me. I'm the truest MC. As hot as you need me to be, as cool as can be. But if you was true as me, then this is for you. But I do this for me. Mm. Bro, the way he... J- and that was the hook. You know that was the hook. Is, and bro. the way he put that together, I was like... He's a wordsmith. And he's got... He's like the Bernard Hopkins of rap. Yeah. Him and Nas. Because yep. Nas is like going on a, on a run now where it's like, all right, bro. Like, we get it. Yeah. Like, you're fire. Yeah. Royce is kind of like the dark shadow of hip hop where mm. it's like real ones know. And yep. lyrically now, it's like, bro, like this guy's keeping up with like Black Thought. Oh, yeah. Who's arguably one He's of the. He's up there. Like, bro. Yeah, as I mean, far as lyricists, for me, Detroit was always the dark horse of hip hop. Mm. Detroit spawned some of the best shit we've seen yeah. and some of the greatest producers and rappers we've seen. Back in the day when it was like. Elzai and Slum Village and Royce the Five Nine and Jay Dilla mm. and all that whole era and that's that's what spawned Eminem and he's the biggest thing that rap has ever seen. Yeah, and all that was spawned from Detroit and I never looked at for me personally Eminem was never it except for like before I knew what he came from. Yeah. Like as a kid, yeah, sure, ninth grade, Slim Shady LP, whatever the fuck, sure, but. And infinite, like I remember ninth grade downloading a Kazaa infinite, like you know <laughs> what I'm saying, yeah, Kazaa, <laughs> Kaza. like Jesus. motherfucker was on Kazaa Lime and LimeWire, Lime yeah, yeah, bro, that was the shit. But yo, dead ass, I found that mad good music through the, that period of time, from the Napster age through that peer to peer network age. I found mm-hmm. dope music because you'd find one dope song, you'd be like, yo, let me see what else this other motherfucker has, yep. and you go through his whole library and you're like finding gems. And that shit changed. That's what turned me into like, oh, I want to pursue music now because like I was like, holy shit, like there's so much shit out here that you can't even find in right. a Borders or a fucking nah. Sam Goody or none of that because shit. Because when you're first exposed to it, TV will make you think that there's only like exactly. 10 rappers. Yep. Yeah. TV will only have you. Of course. Like, you don't realize it's even, a whole community. And I, I was a fucking record store geek. I would get to any mall, any situation. I'd make my parents drive me. I had to just dig through shit and look through all the records and try to find CDs and records and tapes. I, I did it since I was in fourth grade. I, I It was something I always did. And even doing that, it would be like, I never saw that shit. I never heard this shit. What the yeah. fuck? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. And then high school is when you, like, like for me, high school, it was like, now we're kind of like all in tune. Yeah. And then high school became a point where it's like, who could put who onto what first? Correct. Yeah. Like when I was in high school, I never forget, my man, the I same one that put CDs. me onto Master yeah. Ace and all them, we still, he put me on to 50. He gave me the Guess Who's Back mixtape. He's like, yo, check this out. I was like, who's that? He's like, 50 Cent. I was like, who? I heard that name. I was like, who? Yeah. He's like, 50 Cent. Nah, nah, bro. He's fire. I was like, I'll check it out. His first album in high school was undeniable for the time. Yeah. At the time, it was what, it was it. Mm -hmm. That was for, and here's the thing about music is, is two different types of great music. There's timeless music, which is you could play Nas Illmatic right now and it sounds just as motherfucking good, if not better than it ever did, even when it first dropped. Or Jay Z in my lifetime. Uh, okay. Or there's fucking time music, which is music good that is that good era. for this right now. This yeah. fits in the fucking scheme today. Yeah. And there's only t- and that's usually what distinguishes between like a one hit wonder type and a fucking legend. Yeah. And that's why nobody's ever going to put 50 Cent in the category of fucking Nas or fucking Biggie because those guys was timeless and 50 was time. Yeah, because every time I like if I go back and listen to Get Rich or Die Trying right now, like it's nostalgic. Oh, it's nostalgic. Yeah. Where and I love and I I, I gotta tell you to this day that beat selection on that album. I don't know if it was him. I don't know if it was Aaron. I I don't know who the fuck how that happened. The beat selection on that fucking album was tremendous for the time. Yeah, it was tremendous. And it, it it's nostalgic where, like you said, you can go back and listen listen to Nas. You can listen to Hove. You there's, there's a sol- very small selection and where. It could it could come out today and, and it'll still is good. It'll still slap like yep. it's brand new. Yep. So it's yeah. harder to do that. It's very hard to make the perfect music for the time. It's very hard. You got to be dialed in. You got to be tuned in. You got to be riding that wave. But and you got to stand out better than the ones that are doing that. Yeah, wave. Correct. But it's way harder to make something that is just completely timeless that yeah. never fades. That's special. That's yeah. different. That's why yeah. we put these people on different pedestals. Different groups they they that's the thing is we have to appreciate in this world that no matter what fucking thing we talking about whether it be music or anything else there's levels to everything of course everything of course and bro. guys like but to circle back to what we got we were talking about with the detroit stuff 
a lot of the guys from that era in Detroit, they was taking it to that next level, yeah. and they were making it fucking. And the thing is, we got to recognize and appreciate the growth and the uh, trajectory of where all this shit came from and went and is going. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. You know who from Detroit? I feel. Don't laugh, bro. You know who from Detroit? I feel like did not get the props he deserved. His first album was fire. The singles were so. Who didn't ass. get no rack? Huh? Who didn't get no rack? Who? Bro. Hey, yo, I'm focused. It's the locust. Old Trice is holding the soul, just the prognosis. Obi Trice? Yeah, bro. That first album, Yo, that his first album? shit, his first Fire. shit, his first shit was fucking arguably better than fucking 50 and all them. Facts. We was like, we were, when he first came out that first album, we were all looking at each other like, ooh, is this, he's, he's nice to Singles everybody. were ass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, yo, I got But that chief. album, that first but album. that intro, when he stepped in, hey, yo, I'm focused. It's the locust. Old Trice is holding the soul. You know what? A, no, I was like, Whoo! You know what? A lot of people from there would say who they were influenced by, though, was Proof. Yeah, that's true. Everybody says that. Yeah, that was undeniable. Like yeah. everybody from there was like Proof, Proof, Proof. You hear every Royce, Elzai, everyone, yeah. Yeah. all of them say that. Yeah. Proof was, you know, and that's the thing. There's certain people who drive the culture. Well, certain people are like, like. And I know some you you've given me shit for this before, but like, there's certain artists I listen to, and it's not because they're like super lyrical. Sometimes they're just like a, a an energy, yeah. like it's just like a like a vibe. Yeah, like music is a vibe. Proof, proof, R.I.P. Like proof out of all of them, he he was more lyrical than half of that Most organization. Of them. He wasn't as lyrical to as me Elzai. as Elza or as, Royce. Nah. Yeah, bro. He wasn't. But, but yo, when but, he stepped but, on but, a record, it was his presence was felt. Yeah, bro. Some people have that, and and bro, I mean, even on that old I would, Trice, I, I would argue that Biggie's biggest attribute was he had just one of the best presences of all time. Yeah, it's not even about what he says; it's just how this motherfucker yeah. said it. Yeah, it was, yeah, it was just it, it was, was the, charisma, the aura. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, no, but that's what it is. is some people have yeah. unteachable presence on the microphone. Presence is one of the five major keys of being a fucking good MC. Yeah, presence you gotta rope is, somebody in. You have to have that presence. That's one thing you have that's one mm. thing when i rapped i had that's mm. just it's something you can't teach no you know what i mean no. it's just that's what it is it's something that you either have it or you don't yeah and even like go, going back to proof like even if you look at that old trice album that that record i forget the name he had a record it. on it yeah he had a d12 it was like towards the end of the album and oh 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 killed it oh killed it he stepped on he killed it and then you're going through the rest of them canava and all that other shit it's like all right yeah they're all then, average. Then you get to proof, right? And if you read what proof is saying on paper, it's like, okay. But he's going, poof. I don't want a roof. Stop it on like reindeer hoofs. Just the way he delivered it, it was like, whoa. Yeah, huh. yeah. If you read on paper, it's something reindeer hoofs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, it's just really? what, like I said, not what he said, how he said it. New glass out for Christmas. <laughs> Ready now. No, the you reindeers are on the first today. one. The re reindeers are on the first one, bro. But either way, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, it's a holiday time of year. There's yo, nothing that says I love you more than a great <laughs> Christmas glass from my friend here, Mike Barton. Yo, can I tell you something? I wore this shirt just for you, bro, because this episode is going to come out sometime around Christmas. And I'm the nightmare before Christmas. And you Christmas. are the fucking nightmare <laughs> before Christmas. I had to have this fucking nightmare fucking... <laughs> Unsufferable <laughs> cunt on our fucking podcast Hi. because I because I knew it would just be the best uh, uh. fucking play on words to fucking uh. say this right now. So yeah, I knew I love I that like you that. knew where I was going with Hi. it. <laughs> yeah, man. So and 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 spinning back to finally, lastly, to to wrap up that one point, just to put the I think also the way I keep going. With the music shit, bro. Bro, like, uh, Vital and Sin really keep me grounded, bro. Like, you guys got a good team over there. You always had a good team. You and Vital bro, was the basis of all that shit. Y'all's been yeah. together. I remember going to, like, you wasn't even there. I was at some sneaker event. It was like Jay Grant, Vital, and all those dudes. And they was just like, it's like a team vibe over yeah. there. It always was. Y'all had the team vibe, which is good because it takes a fucking team to do that shit. A lot of people don't realize that. No, they don't. They don't. And you guys knew that earlier. I always respected that about y'all. Because you, that, No, bro. because you, you guys realize, like, it takes a fucking... It's not, one man can't do all this nah. work, bro. And you also have to be open, like, bro, like, 
behind the scenes, bro, there's been times I've wanted to literally strangle Vital. And of vice course. versa. Oh, he's wanted to I'm kill sure he's me. wanted to kill, yeah, yeah. Uh, could You're you believe an easy, that? E- easy person to want to kill. I'm easy. Listen, <laughs> if you want to kill me, something's wrong with you. Can I also say something? No, can I also say <laughs> no, something? <laughs> can I also say something? There's only one other person out of all of our boys who continue down that music path. That's Jimmy Hayes. So shout out him too. Shout because to Polo. Yo, Straight up, Polo fucking is the only other person other than you who I can still say to this day is still doing it to that yeah. degree. You know and what I mean? Polo, Polo, Polo really did a lot. Polo, to me, Polo does not get the flowers he deserves no. on a local front. He doesn't. But the he real really ones know, though. But no, the real, the real ones, ones know. know. He was all about Fuck building. That. He's I'm, young. All right. For it's us. it's it's the real ones either know or it's the dick eaters that don't want to give Polo his flowers. I'm just gonna say it like that. You either don't know or you're a dick eater, and that's why you're not giving Polo his flowers. Because the real ones that do know are the ones that we respect from this music shit that anybody with a fucking sound ear would respect, and they give Lo his flowers. Of course. So if you don't give Lo his flowers, I'll chalk it up. You might not be tapped in, which that could be your fault or it could be his fault. But if you do know and don't give him his flowers, you're you're, eating, you're just being a dick. Yeah, bro. Like yeah. you're really like there's a secret agenda there because Lo is one there's of the most humble. There's nothing to like. He's a great kid. He's humble. He's talented as shit. Yeah, he is. He always like, has been. Even when I did, always respected him from a business standpoint, on a personal standpoint, and on a musical standpoint. And he's another one that now, same thing. What I have with all y'all who's in the in the uh, sphere, you know what I'm saying? Polo Polo has really gone to heights that, I mean, even just working with certain individuals that he's worked with. You know, oh, I, yeah. I don't, I don't want to roll out his accolades. You know, in case he's ever here, I want, I want him to tell start his there. stories. Yeah, yeah, I want him to tell his story, but. Lowe's really, if you do your research, Lowe's really worked with some uh, some some names. And Lowe himself has had, I mean, Gucci shoes. He grinds, bro. He Gucci, went on tours. Gucci, all sorts Gucci of shoes from a local front is the biggest record to come out of Long Island in a long time. You know what's bro. sad? Can I tell you something what's sad? The sad thing for me is that the average Long Islander, even if they're a big ass hip hop head or they think they are, mm. They don't know Jimmy. They don't know you. They don't know H. They don't know the era that we're talking about. The era we're talking about, in my opinion, is the since the original golden age of hip hop, where you're talking rock him and shit. Yeah. The only other time Long Island's been as relevant is when the time we was talking about. Yeah. And Jimmy was an integral part of it. All of the people we've talked about today was integral parts of it. And there was shit going on. Yeah. There was more shit going on then than ever. But you can, you can, you're right. But then you, you, you take that same argument and you look at it and you go, but whose fault is that? Like, if he's never heard of me, well, that's technically my fault. I hear I'm what not you're saying. Do, I'm not doing it. Like, but, but it's he also, shouldn't be able to open I up his, his, his social media without seeing my name, especially if he's local here with I him. understand that, but no matter what, because where we are in New York, it's such a dense population of people, no matter what, that ain't how it works. It's word of mouth. And it's always oversaturated. More, and yeah. it's always oversaturated. Bottom line is it's who you know, who puts you on, blah, blah, blah. That's It's yeah. local. But at the end of the day, it's also about these people aren't seeking shit out. Yeah. When we was young, we seek this shit out. Yeah. Even then, we were seeking shit out. We wanted to hear what was dope. We wanted to hear what was next. We wanted to hear what was going on. These people don't have that passion to seek for it. No. And it starts there. Yeah, that's but true. it is said to me for for real that that generation with so much talent and so much going on was so underlooked, and that's why when you're saying like you know some people don't give Jimmy his flowers, it's like a lot of people n- never gave nobody their flowers, bro. Yeah, that's what I'm just saying. No, but, but Jimmy saying, was a big part of no, it. No, but I'm saying if you know of him, right? Like I know what you're if, saying. If you I know, know what you're of him and don't give Correct. him his flowers, that's different. Like even like bro, like my music might not be for this person. And that's fine. I it's understand preference. that. Music, yeah. music is preference. It's always subjective. It. And even some of my biggest followers and supporters, I don't expect them to like every record, Correct. bro. Right? You know me. Yeah. Yo, bro, you're so, one of my good, one of my best friends, bro. Yeah. And you know. You'll tell me, be like, oh, bro, I don't like this but record. But you also know you'll make a record. This one ain't for you, bro. Yeah. Yeah, it, because you know everybody has a taste and you know my taste. Yeah, which is why that's now, it. I, I, you, you start to But learn. I also respect why you're doing it and who right. you're doing it for. So the thing is, is so if you know low and you can't find no kind of appreciation in what that man does, like yeah, bro, like like or you got like a weird disdain for son, and you're weird, and I don't want to be around you because low has always been standing positive energy, yeah, bro. 
even uh, when we did the pressure record, bro. Like it was, it was just easy. It was just easy, bro. Shout out, Jimmy, man. I'm glad we brought him up. Miss my boy. I seen him not too long ago. I seen him more recently than I seen you. So that's that's good. I seen him more recently than I seen. Yeah, you too. but uh, you know, like it's just it's weird how like. All of us are on this island. It's a small island. It's a small world. But there's just so many people here that a lot of shit gets lost in the fucking wind, bro. Because you know what it is too. It's it's a it's a multi, it's it's a mix of things. For starters, speaking as an artist, everybody that does music wants to be the king of Long Island. Of course. It's the corniest that's, shit. You know it what it is? is? Music has always shit. been more competitive than anything else. And, and that's, that's not fun. what it's about. It, it, competitive, competitiveness is good, but that's not what it's, it's all fun. about. But the issue for me becomes when your ego is bigger Correct. than your last it's record. Ego. Your ego is bigger than your last record. Mm. That's a problem. Mm. Y'all want to be this kid? Have Long Island, bro. Because I look at my... my um, Timeline? Yeah, and I look at the breakdown of certain records, whether it be Spotify for artists, Apple for artists. Bro, like, there's records being played in Belize. Like, I just looked at my Spotify wrap-up. It was played in 22 different countries. And I, that was this year. And it's been a slow year this year. So, Well, you haven't played a lot of new music this year. That's, yeah, yeah that's, that's what I... That's what I... Y'all can have Long Island. Yeah, I, I don't you're, care about you're, that. you're looking above that. Because at the end of the day, even the ones yeah, you know that don't is, know, you they'll know, follow after it you already also, happens. You also know it's a crabs in a barrel mentality out here until you already have the now fucking every, juice. Oh Once you have the sauce, God. now suddenly they, they heard of you. Oh, I knew this guy. He was my Bro. boy. We hung out. <laughs> Kaz, Kaz posted the picture when he signed me, right? Then he posted a picture of him and me at the, at the, uh, at the place, right? And I'm looking at the picture. And it's all these, a lot of love. But then there were certain names that were on that post. They were like, oh, that's the bro. That's the bro. And I'm like, what? And I'll never forget one day I went to the office and Kaz was like, yo, you know son right here? You're everybody's bro. Bro, I didn't realize it was a family reunion. I got all these bros I never knew I had. So the fucking, bros. and I told Kaz, <laughs> I told Kaz, we're laughing in the office at certain individuals that are reaching out to him, like, vouch, like trying to get me to vouch for them. Like, sucking my shit to get a meeting with Kaz. And we're laughing in the office. And I'm like, yo, bro, if I didn't talk to you directly about this, uh, an individual, it ain't me, bro. And he was like, I already know. Which reminds me, another artist that's super talented you should look into is R&B, D. Banks. Yo, I know your boy. D. Your boy is Banks nice. is so fun. I'm going to tell you like this. D he's Banks nice. is... R&B wise, he's nice. Forget it. Yeah. He's on Spotify. I was trying oh, to... Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I was trying to put him on with Kaz for the longest time. I remember you it was told, just, I do remember you told me that. Yeah, bro. I, Banks is paying I mean, you got a few features for him, right? I did. He yeah. actually... He was on the record with uh, me and Sheik. Me That's and Sheik that? Luch. No, nah. I don't know who the fuck I think that it's, is. I think it's D. Dot Banks. Uh, yeah, if you... D. Dot Banks. If you look at... um. The Better Man record with Sheik Luch. He yeah, did I think the that's him. Yep. He did the hook that's for that. Him, right? Yeah, that's my yeah, boy. D, D. Dot Banks. Yo, yeah. D, what up? Yo, yo D. D. Dot Banks. Yo, he got Banks some wild talent. Nice, bro. Right. I remember the first time you you played me the hook he did for you. Going up. Going up. Yeah. And I remember you played it for me, and I was like, yo, who the fuck? Son is nice. <laughs> yeah, and bro. you were like, yeah, bro. Like, I found this dude. Like, <laughs> And I was like, nah, but for real, I do remember that vividly because I remember being like, yo, son, who's the other dude? There's one, ain't there one other dude you had do hooks? He was a producer, and you had him do a hook? Or was that him? No, you're thinking of... Um oh, man. You know who I'm talking about. Yes, he did Love Unconditional. Yep. Uh... T. Jones. T. Jones. He's also T. pretty Jones. good. Now, you know what's He's funny. He's a soulful boy. Now, you know what's funny. So, T. Jones, I met via certain other social platforms. There's been at least... T. Jones is one of them. Uh, the producer that did Million Dollar Dreams is another one. And there was one more. I found all three of them when they were low they're all like doing big things now they're all talented guys here's the thing where i'll tell and i'm like, not saying i have credit for that no no I'm no, not no, saying no, no. That. but here's what but i will give you credit no here's what I, no i will give you credit i knew as a producer who knew i had a good year mm -hmm. when i sat down with you for the first time and i was going through beats every time you're like yeah yeah, yeah put that one to the side i was like this motherfucker got a good ear. Because like, <laughs> yeah. he was taking all my good joints. Yeah. And I remember like, you know, like 
back then, like, I'm trying to save some of those good joints. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? But I respected your ear so much. I'm like, you know what? Fuck, I'm throwing a dart with this guy because I'll throw him the good joints because he has such a good ear to recognize, oh, those are all on my top five right now. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I will always tell you, I always credit you. Your ear has always been good. And that's the thing is, you respect that about other people because I know that's why you're a big fan of guys like, let's call it Rick Ross. Love him. But and I'm not the biggest fan, but yeah. I respect where you're coming from because like he does have a good ear, and you yeah. respect that he has a good ear, yeah. and that's why you fuck with him so hard. And, and he I'm caters. Like, I, I hear you. And he'll cater the record to him now. That's because why his ear is so good that now he can say, "All and right." So I the reason I brought that up was exactly why I gave the BCU, to you, bro. Because yeah. I knew that's how you was, bro. For real. Yeah. Even the first time. And speaking of like the first time you came true, <laughs> true, true, came true. You brought the whole team. I'll never forget it. Damn. You pulled up with like five heads. I'm like, yo. <laughs> I'm like, yo, son's just trying to get beats. And he came through with five guys. Like they took two cards. <laughs> <laughs> like, Listen, I, I pulled up with the with the fleet. Yeah, bro. It was, I'll never Did forget. I? It was I never forget it, bro. I met Bucks that day. I yeah. met uh fucking uh what's his name? Uh I don't remember this. Fuck, you don't you don't even hang out on like that no more. What's his name? Oh, oh. Big dude, dreads, humble, humble. Yeah, no, that's my boy. We still yeah. talk on a daily. I, but I don't. You, you, back in the day, you guys was inseparable. Nah, yeah, 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 yeah. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I remember, like he, you guys. But he, but the same thing. He at that time, I think he kind of shared that same passion for music, and then it was the weirdest thing, bro. Like, like humble was nice as shit when I he first was. Met, I like, remember, bro. Like when I, I first remember. met him, I remember being like, he was the first person, like that. He was like, yo, I rap. And I was like, yeah, I rap too. And he went first, and I was like, oh, like, okay. Oh, he raps. Like, now I got to, like, dig in the roller deck so, like, some of my best verses, like, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> like, he not playing. Okay. But he he kind of said, like, he, but he flat out said it. He was just like, yo, bro. There was, he got to a point where he was like, I don't love this anymore. I, I, res and, I respect it. I've and, been there. And, yeah, bro. I've and, been there. And now he's got a We all got our own path. He's got, he a, got a family. He's got a beautiful family. Yeah, I'm and very he's happy doing, for And him. he's doing good for himself. I haven't so seen him in Shout fucking, out to Humble. Love you, bro. I haven't seen him in fucking years, bro. Yeah. I haven't seen Bucks since probably fucking your wedding. No shot. Bro, really? I'm dead ass. Bucks actually is the one that grabbed me this hat. I figured pin, pin ass, head ass face. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Shout yeah. out Bucks, bro. Yeah, that's 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 my brother. That's Jaden's godfather. I love so. you know I love that yeah. guy. Uh, yeah, and then Jay Grant and I remember you guys pulled up and I remember being like, "Yo, son pulled up with like a whole entourage." Like I don't know how to act sometimes, bro. No, nah, but no, but I'm just saying. I remember being like, he pulled up with a whole entourage, and I'm like, you know, and as I more I got to know y'all. It just, there was a team thing, and that's what was keeping you guys on my radar personally. It was like, they got talent, and they're a team. It's a family unit. Yeah, you know, but that shit helps. Yeah. I knew that shit back then, that shit. So I'm yeah. like, I'm keeping my eye on these guys, because yeah. these guys, they got the groundworks. Everybody everybody played a position, and they yep. knew what their position was. And I respected it, bro. And I they, seen it. they didn't overstep it. That's what it's about on a team. Yeah. Everybody has a spot and something that they can bring to the table. Yeah. Just don't try to overdo and be something you ain't for the team. Just do your job, and if it, the team's going to be good. And keep your eye That's on anything. And, and that's keep, basketball. That's hockey. That's yeah, anything. Yeah, and keep your eye on the focus that you don't get to where you're going by stepping out of your position. No, your you don't. Role. You get what I'm saying? Oh, like, yeah. That's a fact. Like, I'm, like, at the end of the day, like, when we do a record, like, I'll tell Vital, like, I have ideas. Like, my brain goes a mile a minute to the point that I get so, like, caught up like, I'll be like, yo, do this, 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 And he'll, he'll literally sometimes have to look at me and go, like, yo, let me Slow work. Slow down. Like, let me work. Shout out, Vital, man, because I've I seen his come up, too. And when he first started, he wasn't even mixing like that. Like, that's not even what he was doing. He was just recording. Yeah. I think. And then I, I just seen his elevation. I seen it. And it was just like, at some point, it was undeniable. We was all, even even you must have been like, yo, son's on a whole nother level now. I think we pushed, I think we pushed each other. And yeah. I think that's just like we It's only natural. There's such a chemistry when we work. Like it can literally go like it's a roller coaster of emotions. Sometimes. I remember when you weren't even recording with him. Yeah. Yeah. I was well, yeah. with Neo. Yeah. He was with Neo over there. And then Neo ended up moving to Vegas. Yep. And then he basically stepped up and that's yeah. when he took it to a whole nother level. Because he I think he pushed me as an artist 
Nah, I don't think so. I know so. Yeah. Let me rephrase that. I don't fact. like that word. That's a fact. He pushed me as an artist. And I, I pushed him as an engineer. Yeah. Because it's always like he pushed me out of my comfort zone of just rapping. Right? And like to take more melodics. I'll tell you like this. If it wasn't for vital, a record like complications would never, never came happen. around. If it wasn't for me being so fucking neurotic and meticulous, I don't it, it, it's hand in hand, bro. It's like murder mook and smack. Mm -hmm. Like we kind of mm -hmm. okay. helped each other. Yeah. Like on the levee system, pull each other up. You feel me? It's uh, what is it uh, in nature when there's two things that help each other? They they yeah. don't hurt each other. They only help yin each yang? other. Yin yang is that? Yin no, yin it's yang? like no, it's a <laughs> fucking biological term. I don't know. I'm fucking hitting the pen and drinking beers. He said nature, and you pulled out. Yin yeah, he's gonna talk about yin yang. Yeah, yeah. We, I didn't say Eastern philosophy. I, or yeah. I haven't had nine percent in a while. <laughs> <laughs> this guy goes, he's like he's shot me nature. He's like yeah. fortune cookie. <laughs> it's like what are your lucky yeah. numbers? Yo, I'm done. <laughs> This guy's talking about astrology. Yeah, he goes. It's He's like, what's your sign? <laughs> he goes, episode, Sorry, episode, the Sorry, little guys. dipper. <laughs> no, but the fuck. Up. And then, and then, I think when we brought sin on, sin, like, bro, sin's got so much. I'm, a, I'm, I'm, I'm making a disclaimer on your pod. I like to do this where I like to make little announcements whenever I do a pod. I like to make, and I'm gonna call it right now. Sin Casualty is going to have one of the most fire top three intros to ever come out of Long Island. Oh, word? Ever. I believe that. Bro. I've heard enough of him over the years to believe that. Bro. He's on different sides. You know what I realized? Like, he really is. When there's he a is, man he at is peace, different. He's when different. he's at peace and he's just in a really good creative space. And he moves on his time. You're not going to tell him when he's got to get shit done, right? That's how a good artist works, let's be honest. And, like, it goes back to even me saying, like, to keep to stay as invested. Like, I have Vital being like, yo, when you coming back to the studio, bro? Like, you've been on a little hiatus. Yeah, that's fair. Some other times I'll be like, yeah, fuck it, you know? Sin don't want to hear none of that. I'll Sin come has, when I come. No freaky, but yeah. No freaky, he, bro. He'll have... He'll have pause. <laughs> yeah, pause that one. He'll fucking <laughs> guy. <laughs> but the thing is, is he'll he has that discipline where he's like, I got. But then, like, I got to get back in the studio. But then, like, sometimes if I'm not sure about something, or if I'm just wanting like a an ear, I'll send him something, and he'll be like, Yo, this is fire. And then he'll send me something a month later that'll be like, Yo. Like you helped inspire us, and then I'll send him something a month later. Be like, "Yo, bro, that last joint you sent me helped me inspire." Like so you inspire guys could kind of snowball yeah, off bro, each other, like, and, and bro, it's just a well-oiled machine that we just move on our time. And I think one of the things where we're really blessed, and I just see it in for us personally, is we're blessed enough that we don't have to constantly be the center of attention, like on social media and shit, and not knocking anybody that does, like. There's certain people that they, it helps them to be active every day and post content yeah. every day. And realistically, if you look at the formula of everything, it probably they're, does. They're doing what you should be. Yeah, doing, correct. Right? We're blessed enough that, bro, every time something comes out, like I'm happy with the support. I'm happy with the numbers. Like I'm pleased with it. And, I, and, and we just make each other better. And we have that luxury for now on a local front. Yeah. Obviously, to go further, we're going to have to be more active. But, bro, we're cooking, bro. It's quiet right now, but we're cooking. And then when we're not cooking, Vital's doing big things with Twitch. Go follow him on Twitch. Bro, it's just life is good right now, bro. I can't complain. Family's healthy. My friends are healthy. It's, it's just life is good in a, in a fucked up world. Yeah, well, that's all you could ask right now, bro. So I'm very happy to hear that. And I'm very happy to have you come on for the first time. Salute, my boy. Yes, sir. And imagine fucking knowing nothing. 